Welcome to Therapy Cable. I'm Dr. Asan Garajadaki, clinical psychologist and founder of Therapy Cable. And I'm very happy to announce that I have with me a very honored and special guest, uh, Dr. Lauren Costine. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you very much for coming and uh, really uh, jump-starting our uh, LGBT series. We have uh, for a very long time wanted to add uh, content to Therapy Cable that focuses on LGBT issues and been searching for the right people to really to uh, take the leadership on this and we have uh, identified a few and I'm very glad that we have found Dr. Lauren Costine. You are um, located in LA. Is that yes, right? I okay. am. Um, yeah. So why don't we start it with a little bit of introduction sure. about yourself, your practice, and you know what are you doing in LA? <laughs> <laughs> Please share with our viewers. Okay, well, um, I am a clinical psychologist and a writer and an activist and a teacher and I present workshops and um, on a number of different subjects. But my main subject is LGBT affirmative psychotherapy and lesbian psychology. So I am an out lesbian and um, I teach on the lesbian psychology at Antioch University. I also work with um, lesbians who are suffering from love addiction. And then I also work in the LGBT community in general uh, working in a form of therapy called LGBT affirmative psychotherapy, which is not that well known at this point, though it's been around for a very long time. It's just starting to get momentum finally, mm -hmm. which we're really happy about. Mm -hmm. And it is, a, it is a specialized way of working with uh, the LGBT community that focuses on the trauma mm -hmm. that LGBT people, we suffer from growing up in a heteronormative Mm -hmm. and homophobic, biphobic, transphobic, lesbianphobic society. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can define these terms mm -hmm. more later because sure. they're kind of bigger terms that yeah. not everybody knows. Yeah. Um, but they're really important terms, actually, because yeah. I believe that these phobias and these sexist attitudes and mm -hmm. ideologies actually affect everybody. Absolutely. In a negative they sense, do. you yes. know, because mm -hmm. they put us all in a box and mm -hmm. they put pressure on everybody to be a certain way. Yeah. So, um, so part of what I want to do is is educate the public at large, but particularly the LGBT community about this special way of working with our population that addresses mm -hmm. the trauma to help heal the mm -hmm. trauma, ameliorate the trauma. So, mm -hmm. and since it's not that well known yet. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important that these ideas get out there and the understanding that there are specific mm -hmm. therapists that are trained in this way of working with the population. Mm -hmm. And not everybody knows that when they're looking for a therapist. So when you mentioned that, you know, I, I would like to really uh, get into the core of the issue when you say therapists who are trained in the field, because as it stands today, we are more familiar with gay or lesbian affirmative, uh, I'm sorry, friendly right. rather than affirmative. Right, and What you're exactly. saying that there is a difference yes. between these and there's a major significant difference. Yes. I'm not sure if our viewers, even therapists, know what that difference is. No, you're right. They yeah. don't so because, that. yeah, okay, that's great. Well, partly, you know, it's, it's nobody's fault. I mean, yeah. you know, because we've grown up in a society that's negate and devalued or minimized LGBT people in general until recently with the, with the social justice movement, mm -hmm. um, no one has been trained on how to work with um, this population in a, in a universal way. In other words, most universities that are teaching yeah. masters or PhD mm -hmm. students have any uh, classes on this whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Their human sexuality class yes. may not even mention mm -hmm. any sort of other kinds of sexuality besides heterosexuality. So mm -hmm. therapists end up going out there, opening up private practices or working in clinics mm -hmm. or in um, treatment programs, 
and they have zero understanding of how mm-hmm. to work with the specialized population. Right. So that's number one, because, mm-hmm. you know, one of the things I do like to say is therapists, we are really most, for the most part, the most well-meaning people. So we're not mm-hmm. trying to do this mm-hmm. in this way, mm-hmm. but, you know, everyone's being failed by the yes. system is basically yeah. what's happening. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, there is this approach. It's being put out there. And specifically, the difference between LGBT affirmative and LGBT friendly is Mm -hmm. an LGBT friendly psychotherapist Mm -hmm. or psychologist might, you know, just be a really open minded person. Okay. Maybe be really liberal, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. never had, you know, any issues with Mm -hmm. an LGBT person, Mm -hmm. may even have friends, you know. Accepting. Yeah, accepting, may have a child, or may Mm -hmm. even be LGBT themselves, you know, so, Mm -hmm. you know, they can give a lot of support Mm -hmm. and, you know, positive regard Mm -hmm. and kindness and all of that around Mm -hmm. the person's um, LGBT identity. Okay. They may be, um, you know really be able to hear the coming out process yes. or or be there around their relationships mm-hmm. and things like that. But they're not going to necessarily know how to address a specific kind of trauma okay. that I'm Go going ahead. to talk about in a second. So yeah, okay. um, they're going to do all of these wonderful things, but it's going to only take the client so far. Only so far. So there's a kind of a block or a wall somewhere. Yeah. yeah. They're going to okay. they're going to hit a place where they're not going to be mm-hmm. really able to okay go take the client any further. Mm -hmm. So basically what happens is we have grown up in a heteronormative society, right? So heteronormativity is the idea that only heterosexuality is normal. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's called heteronormativity. It's Mm -hmm. heterosexuality is the only one that's normal. It's the one that is expected of people too. Mm -hmm. There is this assumption, unless someone is very obviously different, there is an assumption that everyone's heterosexual. And that's what happens when there is a dominance in, Mm -hmm. you know, when when there's a dominant kind of way of being in the world. Pretty dichotomous, black and white, basically. Very, right? Mm -hmm. So unless, you know, so, and, and, and this was really talked about uh, beautifully by Adrienne Rich when she said women in particular mm-hmm. are assumed to be heterosexual. Mm-hmm. All women mm-hmm. are assumed mm-hmm. to be, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, it turns out that's not even remotely true. Yeah. Um, women tend to have a lot more fluid sexuality yeah, yes. and things like that. Right. So, um, so back to the point. So there's this world that says, okay, everyone's heterosexual. Mm-hmm. Everyone needs to fit into these kind of gender expression boxes. Mm-hmm. Women, you know, are feminine mm-hmm. and wear dresses and skirts and, mm-hmm. you know, are thin, especially yeah. in, this, in, in, in this country, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Thin and, you Body know, image. yeah, Huge. mostly white, yeah. you know, this kind of yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Very, very much of this stereotype. Mm-hmm. And men are masculine and... Right you know, kind of take charge and Mm -hmm. there's supposedly no, a lot about a lot of things Mm -hmm. and this kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's an oppressive attitude around that people needing to be that way. Cause when you end up being even remotely different variant in any way, Mm -hmm. you tend to, if you're a man and you're more effeminate, and you have more effeminate features or expressions, or if you're a woman and you have more, um, you know, masculine kind of features mm-hmm. or something in between, you're not going to feel like you fit as part of this society, this ideology, this mm-hmm. ideal. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay. So that's a part of it. Then also, you know, you want to be with someone of the same gender. Mm-hmm. And most of the world, particularly very, very kind of closed minded, rigid, religious kind of societies, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll say that's a sin, mm-hmm. that's wrong, it's mm-hmm. bad. So um, this creates a lot of problems mm-hmm. with a person developing a positive self-image of themselves. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. So one of the terms that we call about this is we call this the internalization of phobias. Mm-hmm. So the world out there is phobic. Mm-hmm. 
of different kinds of gender expressions or different kinds of sexual expression and sexual uh, love. Mm -hmm. And so there's homophobia, there's lesbian phobia, there's biphobia, and there's transphobia. Mm -hmm. And then those phobias get internalized into the LGBT person Mm -hmm. and it starts becoming the tape that they run, the story that they tell themselves Mm -hmm. about themselves. Mm -hmm. And none of that's good. If you imagine the society, society's told you, you don't fit into this box, you're not okay, or you're actually an abomination, something's mm-hmm. really wrong with you, then you internalize that, and mm-hmm. we already have this inner critics, mm-hmm. you know, everyone's got this inner critic we face, then mm-hmm. you put that on top of it, yeah. and then there's this extreme self-hatred that can occur. Mm-hmm. Now, there's all these kind of defenses that keep us from knowing that we have these voices mm-hmm. that are telling us they're no good, right. so they come out as symptoms of mm-hmm. addiction, right. sexual acting out, mm-hmm. risky behavior, um, you know, too much food, too much all kinds of things, um, just low self-esteem, not mm-hmm. really one able to reach their potential, mm-hmm. or, you know, sabotaging behaviors in yeah. their relationships. And things like that. Kind of self-numbing and distracting uh, strategies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the kinds of things that are addressed specifically Mm -hmm. in affirmative Mm -hmm. psychotherapy. So they're they're things that basically may remain dormant in, uh, let's say, uh, in a relationship, therapeutic relationship that is um, LGBT friendly but not affirmative because... Like you said, they may go only so far and not really dig deeper into this as a goal, as yeah. a goal of treatment. As a goal, right? exactly. Okay. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So wonderful. So that is an uh, explanation of uh, lesbian affirmative as well as just LGBT affirmative approach. And you, we were talking uh, earlier a little bit that you would want that really to become more known. In yes. the society and yes. more of a modality that is taught at uh, training centers and institutes so that the therapists out there uh, can make themselves, you know, available of these uh, resources. And also you wanted really the LGBT community to, you know, kind of be informed that this is what they need to seek out. Exactly. Yeah, I think okay. what's you know, a problem that's occurring now Mm -hmm. is with all these different specialties going Mm -hmm. on in therapy in general and and niches occurring, the the customer Mm -hmm. doesn't know that this option exists Mm -hmm. for them. LGBT people don't know to Mm -hmm. look for an affirmative therapist. They might just look for any therapist. And that may Mm -hmm. help them in a lot of ways and go a certain way, you know, so far. But they're not going to get really to this core trauma. And most importantly, I think when uh, a client gets stuck, uh, they may not know that uh, the reason for that, uh, you know, kind of conundrum that they are in or or the halt or or whatever obstacle that they're experiencing has not really nothing to do with them. Bingo. Right. Yeah. And the therapist is not going to know that in that specific way either. So they might take them down a different path. Path. Right. And this gets yeah. ignored. Exactly. Yeah. Unwittingly, mm-hmm. it gets ignored. Mm-hmm. And that is the biggest thing that I love mm-hmm. about what you just brought up about the internalized phobia concept yeah. Yeah. is it's, we're not saying anything's wrong uh-huh. with an LGBT person. As right. a matter of fact, we, you know, it's, this is what society is doing. It's position. You. Yeah, exactly. And this is why we have... Psychological issues. Issues, exactly. And, th- and this is also why they are so, um, uh, you know, I would say deep-rooted and also so uh, resistant to change because they have been part of the social fabric, part of our identity, part of normalcy, part of the standard. For of thousands of years. Exactly. So this is why we need to really focus on uh, this notion that we need to take that extra mile and educate ourselves and everyone around us about the need for a more affirmative approach toward LGBT um, psychotherapy. So thank you for the explanation. That was great.